Good morning and welcome to your 2025 Superstar walkthrough. If you come up here, we'll take a look at our cabinetry in the overhead. We have storage here and in this cabinet, we have some additional information for Numar owner support. If you have any issue or question, please feel free to give us a call at our 800 number here and speak with Darian Todd. She'll be glad to help you out. Additional storage here. <clears throat> this is your radio core. The radio core is connected to your screen down below. More storage. And your speaker, subwoofer. So inside your driver's seat area you've on your left hand side you've got your window controls door lock and unlock window up and down you've got your mirrors and your heated mirror control so if you turn that to the left and the red led light comes on then the mirrors are heated so use that if you had moisture or frost on your mirrors if you push it down again the heated mirror function will go off. To adjust the mirrors on the driver's side, press the left hand one and then you can adjust the mirrors up and down, left and right. When that one's done, switch over to the passenger mirror, then you can adjust that one. When you're done, just press it again and then you're finished with adjusting the mirrors. The control up in the front here we can look at that a little easier if we move the steering wheel. Uh, we have a lever at the bottom here. If we loosen that, we can move the steering wheel or telescope. So if we tighten that. Our headlights are on right now. These are the marker lights here, and that's off. If we want the headlights to come on automatically, we turn it over to the left. If we want the headlights to be on and we pull the knob out, our fog lights are on. If we pull to high beam, the fog lights go out. Now the fog lights are on. To disengage the fog lights, press forward. To turn the headlights off, let your marker lights on, headlights off. The instrument cluster Starting on the left-hand side is your RPM gauge. Below that is your oil pressure gauge and fuel level. In the center cluster is your home screen here on your left-hand side. You can scroll through that home page, and then once you get to one that you want to view, whether you're going to the right or left, or up and down is the function. So once I choose one of those and press OK, I can go into adjust or change those settings, pressing the OK. Now I can scroll up or down in that icon. Moving over to the right, moving over to the right is my RPM gauge. Below that is my air pressure gauge and my water temperature gauge. In the center, at the bottom, I have my parking brake indicator and my engine indicator. If I release my parking brake, the red light will go out. Over on my left hand side is the battery boost. Here, if I need to boost my engine batteries or my chassis batteries with the house batteries to say help it start, I would press and hold down the battery boost towards the chassis side for one minute and that will help give more power to the chassis batteries to boost them so I can start the engine. If I need to boost the house batteries, I just go in the opposite direction. The keys for the ignition are here. Off is straight up and down. 
and then out. Turn signal here. If our key is on, we can see our turn signal indicators here. Left hand turn and right. Our wiper washer, if we need to wipe wash, just press that in. We can change the settings for our wiper speed, whether that's delay or on or high. Again, Pulling this is just for our headlights, high beam and low beam. On the other side, we have our shift indicator. When we change a gear on the handle, it will display on the home screen. D is drive, N is neutral, R is reverse. I can change from manual or automatic or back and forth when I'm in drive, if I want to shift manually, I would go into the manual shift and then this will change the gear that I'm driving in. Typically, you would leave it in the automatic mode. This right hand handle can be moved up or down to change the brake, which is your exhaust air helping assist your coach to slow down, especially on inclines where you're going downhill. Less or more engine brake, you can adjust it right here. Up is no engine brake and down is more most engine brake. On the right hand control here, we have our telephone on or hang up and you'll have to Bluetooth your phone through the Excite radio to make that function work. We have our cruise control here, set and resume. This sets our cruise control on and then we'll need to set the speed that we want. This will flash our lights or our headlights. So we wanna flash our marker lights or headlights. That's where we do it here. This goes to the screen that you've chosen as your favorites, and in this case, it's the trip. The parking brake indicator, which is red here, is illuminated, meaning the parking brake has been applied towards me. If I want to disengage the parking brake to drive or go in reverse, I would just press this forward. I'm not going to press it forward because we'll park inside a building, but if I press this forward, the parking light should go out and I'll be able to put the coach in gear and drive. When I come to a point where I need to park the coach again, I need to stop, apply the brake here to stop, and then pull this uh, um, parking brake towards me and then put the coach in neutral here. Moving over to the infotainment center, we'll be able to turn that on here for navigation and radio and cameras. What you have here is a split screen. Uh, the screen on the left is your main menu for your radio core and functions. The main menu uh, shows your radio, media center, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, HDMI, auxiliary, Camera control, let's say if I'd select camera control, that's going to give me options to view. So in these options, I can choose one of the icons or I can choose the 360. So if I chose the 360, that's going to show all the way around the coach. Once I select the 360 degrees, I can go back to any of the other views. That's right 
that's the rear view and that's left. If I'm in the rear view, I can press closer, closer up or further away, or the center one is like the mid-range view. If you're in the 360 view, but you want to toggle through the other screens showing here, go to the camera view here, and then you can view here, top and left, top and right. You don't need to say it, just toggle through it. Then we go back to our rear view. To go back to our home screen. We can go through the home screen here. We have an auxiliary camera controls, one we just looked at. Our navigation. We have to accept the terms. Now we can choose a route or select a route that we might have already had in the memory. Say we were selecting a new route. Um, we could search for a destination or we can see ones that we may have already been on and then just select that one. We're inside a building so the GPS isn't going to pull that signal in uh, to help us find our route. So we'll move on to the next one. This is our setup page. Our setup page uh, is what we want to go through when we initially get the coach and set our radio up. Our Bluetooth is a selection we can make. If we want to make telephone calls here, um, we can connect our phone to this device and then once our phone is paired with the Bluetooth, we'll be able to make telephone calls here with our steering wheel selection. When we're done with the radio, we can just turn it off. If we're going to listen to the radio inside the coach, we can just turn the volume up and down here. If we want to listen to the radio outside, we'll need to select house mode. When we select the house mode, then we'll be able to hear the radio out in the outside entertainment center. If the build speaker is turned on for your radio. After you select the speaker mode for the house speaker or the television. On our control panel down here, we've got our emergency flashers on and off. We have a blank spot here. There's a light underneath your feet here at the driver's area. If you turn that on, you'll see that light will illuminate. The lane departure warning can be turned off just by pressing this. If we don't want lane departure uh, telling us that we're moving in and out of lanes. Our shade up and down for the shade above us is here. Turn that down. And then back up. We have our docking light switch on and off. Our cabin ceiling lights here off and then back on. We covered our camera here uh, just a little bit ago. 
the automatic traction control on and off here. And if your engine or transmission is going into shutdown, you can override that shutdown here, um, but it only lasts for a short period of time. Just refer to your owner's manual if you need to get more information on that. It would uh, help you uh, to use that when you need to get out of a traffic area where you don't want your truck to be sitting when the engine stops. Generator start and stop is here. Start goes up, stop is down. There's a light around the outer edge of this. If your antenna is left up, that light will come on and warn you uh, that you need to put your antenna down. This instrument cluster, this switch is not used, this cluster is not used. If you want to lock your differential together for better traction at very low speeds, you can do that here. You can turn it on and off, but refer to your owner's manual on that because that's only in low speeds in for inclement weather. This suspension dump, we can dump our air here. We won't press that one because we don't want to dump our air right now. And then we have USB charger here and another one here for 12 volt charging. Our HVAC controls for the cockpit area are here. To turn those on we have to at least be in our fan setting number one and then we can make our selections here. We can and here we've just turned it on. If we want the cooling for air conditioning, we have to go over to one of these settings to turn the compressor on for cooling. These other settings are for vent air coming in or heat. This button is for recirculate. This one is for warmer or cooler temperature. Zero is off. All right, we'll look at the seat controls here. So right here we have seat heat and we have one mark or two marks. So that's low or high or in the centers off. This lever here allows you to move the seat back in the position that you would like. And then it locks down. This switch here uh, adjusts the upper lumbar support. This switch here uh, adjusts the lower lumbar support. Uh, this lever here is for the air ride and it adjusts the height of the seat. The switch here will lock the dampening uh, on the air ride. So you can go up and down here with it like that, but then once you lock it, you don't get that cushion. In the front of the seat here, there's a metal bar. <clears throat> this, you lift up, will allow you to move the whole seat forward and backwards. Above that, there is a uh, lever that you pull and then you can tilt the seat, like actually like lean back in the seat. And once you release it, it holds that position. So then the next one uh, over, uh, when you release it, it allows the seat portion itself to slide forward or backwards to get you more comfortable in your seat. On the far left is a lever that you can um, move and that is the horizontal isolator so you can choose whether or not you want uh, your seat to be able to move forward and backward <clears throat> you may not want that to uh, be engaged if you're pulling a trailer or um, something that caused the whole vehicle to kind of 
move back and forth could be annoying. Uh, then right here, this lever on the side here, this one will allow you to rotate the seat. Um, if you have it in the right position, heightwise and forward, you can actually turn the seat around and face the other side of the, the interior of the coach. For the armrest, you can bring them down and go all the way to the down position and then as you come up they you'll hear them click and wherever it clicks that's where it's locked in position if you get it too high for your liking just push it all the way back up and start over or push it back out of the way on the ceiling here in the living room area of your coach you have a smoke detector the smoke detector has an led that flashes and has sound that you can test so to test the sound you press in the center and that's an audible warning you can see the led light flash here about every 10 seconds or so that tells you that you have a good battery uh, if you don't get this led light signal or the warning sound you should check the battery make sure it's installed if it's installed then you should replace it to replace it just lift here and pull down after you replace it put it back and retest so moving over into your dinette area we have our overhead cabinets for storage on the left and right of the AV cabinet the audio visual cabinet is pre-wired for your satellite. It is already set up for your Blu-ray DVD and the 120 volt outlets are in the back. So you have your satellite receiver and DVD player to plug in in those two outlets. Above here you have your Bose speaker and that can be used when you're running your TV. To operate the TV lift up, we just go to our panel over here on the wall and go to our systems and then push TV lift up. The red illuminates and the TV lift comes up. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center. That gets to this screen. And then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings then press the center button here and now scroll over to all settings and what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels if we scroll down here to broadcasting then we select that press the center button again and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program. And we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And it'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels, so we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the WineGuard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channels. So if you want to scan for cable, 
turn the over-the-air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program, And this time, we want to, we're plugged in the cable, we've turned our over-the-air uh, wine guard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously, since we are not plugged in the cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. To extend the table for more people to join in dinner or any meal, we just pull the table out and there are two extra leaves. We line the steel alignments up with the other ones. Well, actually they're on both sides of this one. Line those up and then push the table together. And there's extra chairs that you can set here at the table, one or two. And then when we're done, we could just stow those chairs back underneath the bed. And to remove the leaf, just pull and lift. And then just slide your table back in place and push to lock. TV, we press the TV lift down. The drapes and the blinds are all manually operated. Pull and release. There is extra storage space under both of the seats. There's a handle that you grab a hold and release and then push back to lock. So we have storage above the theater seating here. The drapes are also manually operated on this side of the coach as well. There's a 120 volt outlet here. Right beside this first chair, we have the controls for the coach. We just press any one of the icons and we can view that. We can go back to the home and look at another one. This is our shore power. We can turn that on and off all while we're sitting in the chair. There is a storage compartment here between the two chairs with the sliding drawer. To operate the chair to lean back and lift your legs, you can just press the extend, which is the one on the outside. There's a USB plug in the middle for charging to retract the seat on both sides. This is the same, just press the lever closest to you to retract. So above the kitchen sink area, we've got three cabinets here. Um, we have an additional uh, router that comes with your Starlink uh, package. Uh, you won't need that because you have a router installed already, but it's a spare. You have your paperwork here for your coach. 
chassis maintenance manual. Comes with your coach. There's a decal here with all your coach information regarding your VIN, serial number, gross vehicle weight information, as well as your paint code information here. Okay, at your sink area, you have covers. Sink covers can be stored underneath the sink straight back here. There's an extension lift here that you can lock. To unlock, it's just the reverse of that. We have more storage space on this side. We have the trash receptacle here. Small drawer here. We have our Whirlpool microwave. The microwave cord plugs in through the side cabinet here. It has a dual latch. Newmar adds this bottom latch to make sure that the door will stay closed in transit, so you have to close it and open it firmly. The covers for your true induction cooktop have a cutting board on the back side of both covers. So you've got two cutting boards there. The true induction cooktop can only use steel pans or magnetic pans. Um, once you put a pan here, you'll be able to turn it on. Um, it won't stay on now because we don't have the pan, but you can then make your adjustments to the heat. If you'd like to take this unit out, you can just grab a hold of the side here on both ends, lift and unplug the unit right here, and you can take it outside to cook outside. When you're done, just plug it back in and set it back in place. If you just finished using it here or outside, it still may be warm, so be careful when handling it or putting back the cutting boards because you don't want the surface to get too hot. When you're ready to put the covers back on, the rounded edge goes to the outsides. You have a large drawer here, and all of your remotes come in this drawer, along with accessories and key fobs. Filter wrench for your whole house filter. Bed remote. Awning motor adjust. Awning motor retract if you lose power on your Girard awnings and touch-up paint. This is your Fisher Paykel dishwasher. When the power is out, the door is locked. So when you unplug your coach and or turn off your inverter, there's no power here, so the door is locked. Once you plug your coach in, turn your inverter on, and have 120 volt power in the kitchen through the sub panel, just turn this on. Now the door is unlocked and you'll be able to open it and Put your dishes in or take them out and uh, set your wash settings here. Close your door. If you have uh, children around and you want to lock the controls, you can press and hold this for a few seconds and lock the panel. To unlock, same thing. Just hold it down for a few seconds and it unlocks the control panel. And your stainless steel refrigerator, three doors. Now these doors are locked and this is in the travel mode position. This is a, a door lock that Numar adds, and when it's pushed to the left side, the doors will not open. Moving it to the right unlocks 
all three doors. Inside the refrigerator, you have a new filter. The filter is for the water dispenser. Lift this up and insert your filter there. There's another filter for the air movement. It's included here. It goes in the back of the refrigerator. On the ice maker, the ice maker is in this tray compartment. In the back, there's a bail arm. If the bail arm is down, then it makes ice. If the bail arm is up, then it doesn't make ice. To adjust the temperature settings on the refrigerator, you have freezer and refrigerator temps, but you'll notice here the word cooling off. So we'll have to turn the refrigerator on first by holding these two buttons down. And now the refrigerator is on and the snowflakes indicate that it's on high. So if I wanted to change that to just one snowflake or two, that's a lower temp setting. Same with the refrigerator. You have a fast cool selection. Uh, the light selection, we can actually turn the light off or on here. The air filter, you hold that three seconds to reset. So if you change the interior air filter, you can reset this and then it'll give you a warning when it needs to be replaced. The water dispenser is here. Just push your cup in and water dispenses here. To turn the refrigerator off, just press and hold the same two buttons here and the refrigerator goes off. As you enter the coach, right at the entrance, this cabinet has all of the important controls that you'll need to look at. When you come in your coach, you'll need to turn on your battery disconnect so you have power in the coach so you can turn your lights on. So once our battery disconnect is on, uh, we can control our entrance lock here, lock and unlock. We can lock and unlock our baggage doors. We can move our step cover in and out. Where, what is the step cover? If you look down at your steps, there's a cover that goes across the top. If you press that button, you'll see that there's a hidden step cover. And if you hold that down, it automatically comes out. And now you can walk here without having to worry about the steps. So to retract the step cover, just push down, which is the opposite direction, and that stows the step cover back in. If it's a cold morning and I want to turn my block heater on to preheat the engine so it's warm when it starts, I just turn that on, make sure the block heater is plugged in. We'll show you that a little bit later. Our patio light can be turned on and off here. Also does the step well light. And that includes the patio light as well as the step well lights coming on and off. If I want to turn all the lights on or off and on, my coach on and off is here. So you can see how important it is to open this when you walk in the coach and turn on your battery disconnect first. If I'm ready to watch television over the air television, I want to turn on my antenna. This is your wine guard. This control is called wine guard. That is your wine guard television antenna that's mounted on your roof. This is a power antenna in, in that it searches for channels, stores channels, and pulls in channels from long distances. To turn it on, just press the button up in the left top corner it scans and displays the channels that it receives. Since we're in a building, obviously we're not going to get any channels stored. But once we get our channels here, uh, if we're not happy or we didn't pick up enough, we can do another search here. Just It'll search again and uh, get more channels if they're available. Once we have uh, our channels stored in the memory, we can watch television over the air. And those channels, uh, you can... Uh, view on your TV. If you're watching over-the-air TV and you want to switch over to cable, you'll need to turn this off. 
just press this button here to watch cable TV because as long as this one is turned on, it takes priority over the cable. Moving over to the right, you have your inverter and charger from Magnum Energy. So you have a Magnum inverter, which inverts power from your batteries to your kitchen sub panels. It also charges those batteries when you're plugged in or your generators turned on. You can see now it's powered up. We have our charger on and our inverters on. To turn either one of those off, we got a charger here. We can turn the charger off or we can turn the inverter off. This is already set up for the AGS, so you won't need to use the AGS on this particular control because it's programmed into the touch panel. And we'll look at that for your KID panel, which is on your wall. But you can still look at what you have set up for your shore. Your shore cord is set up for 30 amps. So 30 amps or more is what this is set up for. You can go into the settings here and then you can look at those when you turn this dial. Just refer to your operator's manual for more information on that. Moving over here to our precision circuits monitor panel. If you touch it, you can see the backlighting will come on. It tells you what line one and line two supply voltages are. And as you scroll through, it gives you more information on the wiring status being okay. It says what version this control is, and it says you're currently plugged into 50 amps. If you happen to be plugged into less than 30 amps, you can go to this panel and adjust this to the cord size that you have or the breaker on the pole that's supplying your cord because that way it won't have that way it won't need to shed any of the appliances or shed more of the appliances <clears throat> I, I, yeah you'll need to go into this control panel if you're plugged into less than 30 amps and set it for either 15 or 20 amps, 25 amps. You need to do that because this panel only recognizes a 30 amp or above. Once it goes below 30 amps, you'd have to tell the panel that you're on a much smaller cord so that it doesn't have the issue of uh, tripping breakers in your panel or on the, um, or on the post. Once you set that to 15 or 25, then this system knows to shed whichever appliances it needs to. Right now, the loads are not shed because we're plugged into 50 amp. Just to the right of that, you've got your slide, slide out controls. The slide out controls are either for your off door side or your door side. This is the door side here. So if I want to move the slide room on the kitchen side here or the dinette side in or out just press that button and hold it but before you do that you want to make sure you're on air ride so whenever you're going to operate your slide outs in or out just make sure that your coach has air pressure in both uh, the front and rear of the coach and the jacks are retracted if you if the jacks are not retracted, you'll need to retract them because the retract signal tells the airbags to fill so that when your engine's running, uh, your airbags won't inflate. So if since we're talking about the jacks here, uh, looking at this control, if you want to run the jacks down, you have to have the ignition on. So I'm going to turn the ignition on so you can see the LEDs come up. And you'll see you get additional uh, lights that come on here that indicate we're slightly off level. And to level the coach, um, you can do it manually by pressing these buttons for extend and retract. Or you can just hit the auto level button. Now, before you put your coach uh, into auto level or um, you do it manually, you're going to want to walk around the coach and just make sure that there's nothing underneath where the jack uh, uh, pads are going to be extending towards the ground. And you also want to check the reveals on your slide out 
make sure that your slide out reveals are about an eighth inch, or excuse me, make sure that your slide out reveals are three eighths of an inch. And then you'll be able to go into auto level after you've run your slide rooms out. So leveling should only take place after you've checked your reveals and made sure that you can run your slide rooms out after the slide rooms are out, then you'd wanna go into the leveling process. So to do that, you'll turn the key on, hit auto level, and what you're hearing is the air going out of the bags as the coach is going into the leveling process. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through the complete leveling cycle. And once each jack is down, you'll see a red light that comes on to tell you that that jack in that corner is down. So you can see the coach is slightly moving as the jacks are going down. If the area that you're on has too much of a slope, then the excess slope light would come on and then you'd have to move your coach to a more level position, but we're good here because the excess slope light is not on. If at any time during this process you want the jacks to um, store and go back up, you would just hit auto store. But now you can see all of our jacks are down and our yellow lights are off, the showing, up, showing us that we're in a level position. So now we can turn off the ignition. And what you were hearing there was a, a warning signal that the ignition was on. Uh, while it was in the leveling process because the air wasn't in the airbags anymore. So now we're level and we'll do the exact reverse process for auto store that we did when we ran our slides out. So to go into auto store and bring the jacks up, we turn the key on, let the coach air up, run the slide rooms in, and then after the slides were in, then we would go into auto store. So we'll show you that. Turn the key on. After the coach is aired up, then you would go into auto store. As each jack retracts in the corner of your coach, when it's fully retracted, the light will go out. So before you travel, you wanna make sure all your red lights are out. All right, so your last jack is up. The jack warning sound has gone away. And once you have full air in your airbags, you'll be able to travel. So uh, right now um, it's showing that we have auto stored. Again, if you at any time wanted to, you could extend or retract these manually, uh, but it's just about as easy to use the auto level and then auto store button to level. Just beside your leveling, you have your Girard controls for your awnings. You can uh, move your, on, your patio awnings in and out from inside the coach or from outside. We'll show you the remote when we go outside, but inside the coach, you can select one or two uh, front or rear. If we go to zero, that means you're gonna run both of the 
patio awnings out at the same time or in at the same time. So you can choose one or you can choose the other or you can choose both. If you choose both, then you can just hit the out or the in or stop as it's moving. You can also turn on the LED lights here or you can lock them from working here. Once you're done operating, uh, the LED light will uh, go out by itself. Just below that, we have the HWH master reset switch. If your slide out or any uh, jacks or steps uh, have a difficult, give difficulty with operating, you can set the, reset the whole system. Just follow the directions here and hold this down for five seconds. Moving over here, you've got your security lights on the driver and passenger side. You can turn those on and off here. This is the rear one, security light, and the exterior step is just a switch which keeps the steps here at the entrance out. So if you want to keep the steps out, instead of having them going in and out when you close the door, you can use the step override and that just keeps the steps out all the time. So at your entrance door, you've got your two locks. You've got your deadbolt lock and you've got your door lock. Now. The key fob that comes with your coach, there's two of these that come with your coach, will be able to lock and unlock the red lock, which is the handle lock. So I can lock and unlock with my key fob, but I cannot lock and unlock with the deadbolt. So to lock the deadbolt, you have to do it manually from the inside. From the outside, you can lock and unlock the deadbolt with your key that's the longer of the Trimark ones. It's labeled Trimark, so that's the one for the deadbolt on the outside. If I'm inside, I, I've got to use the handle and just turn it counterclockwise to unlock. Just remember that if you open the door, you don't want to leave the deadbolt out and close the door. It'll break the stem. So you can either use the key fob to unlock and lock here, but you have to do this one manually or with the key. There is a key for this one on the outside as well. It's just the shorter of the two, and it also has the word try mark on. We'll go, when we go outside, we'll show you how to unlock or lock the door with the door handle, which is also a try, a try mark product. So the keys, the key fob, and the handle are all try mark. To unlock the screen, this would just be pressed down, and we'll show you that when we go outside. And to close and cover the handles, we can do this. And now we've got a, a, our screen door. Just beside the screen door, we've got our fire extinguisher. If we need to use that, there's just a plastic clip here. We just flip the clip open. And the, okay. And below the fire extinguisher, we have our heating vents here. One is intake and one is discharge heat. We have our pantry, our pantry storage drawers here. These are locked in place. If we want to unlock them, you have to push to open. So you push and they unlock. All of them are the same, just push, unlock, and then we can put things in or take out and then we just push to close and they lock. The pantry door has small clips here that lock the door into place when you close it. You want to make sure that they're closed all the way. Moving over into the bathroom, this is your half bath. The half bath door just swings over to the side. There's a mirror on the inside. As we move into the half bath, there are two large cabinet doors. Those two cabinet doors house the electrical 120 volt box, our Wi-Fi router, our Starlink router, and all the 12 volt fuses. The 12 volt fuses that are up on the right hand panel are displayed and named on the inside of the door on the right hand side. So 
if any of the items that are listed in the list on the decal on the inside of the door fail, that number correlates with the number on the fuse panel. You could go straight to the fuse panel, pull that fuse number out, and check and see if it's blown. Um, if it is, you'll just go to your spare fuses. Your spare fuses are the small panel in the center. Make sure that if you're replacing that fuse that you pick one that's the same size, not larger or smaller. The 120 volt breaker box that you're looking at now, all of the breakers are turned on or up if any of those breakers are tripped, they will be in the down position or maybe just halfway down. To reset them, you'll have to press them all the way down and then back up to reset. Each of the breakers has a name starting at the top left. Starting at the left hand side is your main breaker and all of the fuses for the appliances are named. So if you need to go to that appliance that's tripping. Uh, it, has a it has a label and you'll be able to find it. The fuses on the right hand side of this box are a, called a sub panel. Those are powered up through the inverter. So those appliances can only get their power if the inverter is turned on. The two GFCI outlets in the middle are for your floor heat. So if you look, there's floor heat one for the front of the coach and floor heat two for the rear. Those need to be turned on and the green light needs to be illuminated telling you that the GFCI is working. If it's on the bottom shelf on the left is your Wi-Fi Ranger router. So the router is powered up. You can see the green LED lights are on there to log into the router. The codes are listed right on the front. The Starlink receiver is right in the middle on the shelf and it's connected. The cabinets, uh, the, we've opened the doors and the cabinets in the corner for your uh, storage up and upper and lower. And at the bottom of those two doors are your heating fans and heat return air. The Dometic flush module is the blue lights and the green that you see there to flush your toilet. The top one is to add water to the bowl to make the water level inside the toilet higher. The bottom one is to flush. The green light tells you that you're powered up and running, but if the LED light just below the green one comes on, it's either going to be amber or red. If it's amber, you're getting about 75% full on your black tank. If it's red, you're 100% full on your black tank and you're going to need to empty your black tank before you'll be able to flush your toilet. We have our, our sink here. There's more storage below your sink on both sides here. The sink can be turned on and off here. Uh, left is hot, right is cold. Above that is a medicine cabinet. And shelves. Yeah. So sitting in the half bath, we can see we have uh, two controls here, a 120 volt outlet. This is our heater fan, which we showed you those louvers over near the floor to turn your heat on in the bathroom. You just turn that on. The fantastic vent for ventilation here in the bathroom can be turned on here. If for any reason it doesn't come on, it may have a little moisture or it might be raining. If you want to override the rain sensor, just press and hold down the down button and the rain sense override will come on so that it will open even if it's got moisture or if it's raining outside. To turn the rain sensor override off, just press and hold down for a few seconds. To change the speed of the fan, we can go up or down here, and then to turn it off, we just press again. The other switch below that is you've got your ceiling lights on and off, vanity lights on and off, 
water pump on off, backlighting for the display panel, bright or dim, and high and low lighting. InterVac accessory bag that's in your baggage compartment downstairs when you get your coach new. To open that up and connect it here, you'll want to take some of these out and get to our hose here. This is what turns it on and off here, but we have to insert the hose first here. Now there's a warning label. <clears throat> They're both the same. It just says make sure that the bag is in the vacuum downstairs before you turn it on. So that's all those stickers are. Just a little reminder to put the bag in first. Then we insert our hose. And to turn it on, it's just as simple as pressing the button. And it's on. And we can connect our accessories, whichever ones we want, to sweep the floors or wherever we want to clean. When we're finished, just press it off. And remove the hose. If you have any questions uh, about the operation or if the battery fails that's in here, uh, you can scan the QR code and go to their website to get more information on the system. When you're storing it, be sure to have this uh, touch button on the outside of the bag, not on the inside where the accessories might turn it on uh, while you're in transit. Just beside the accessory connection where we put the hose, you can just manually sweep up to this one. It goes to the same vac system, intervac. Just lift up, sweep. Lower to turn off. Our fantastic vent right here in the hallway or kitchen area can be turned on the same way we did the bathroom right here. The blue button, press it, turns on. We can control our speeds for the fan here. Up for higher speeds. Down for lower speeds. Again, same as the one in the bathroom. If we want to override any moisture that might be on the rain sensor, or even if it's a light rain outside, press and hold down the down arrow. The rain sensor override will come on. Now, even if it's raining outside, we still can operate the vent. Just keep in mind that if you leave that on and it's a heavy downpour, you may get some in your coach. You don't want that. So to turn the rain sensor override off, press and hold three seconds, and it's off. To store it, turn the fan off, just press the blue button again, and it turns off. This is your touch panel control for your KIB. KIB controls the functions in your coach. Similar to the smaller one, the same icons are going to pop up when you touch it. So these are the same icons that we saw when we were uh, sitting in the theater seating. Tanks, levels, tanks, automatic gen start, floor heat, HVAC, Bluetooth pairing with your phone, and lighting. So located in the middle of your coach is your display panel for operating your coach functions and different features. You just wake it up, you just press it, and then all of the icons at the bottom are the ones that you can select to control or just view. So starting at the left, you have your tanks, Automatic Gen Start is the AGS, Floor Heat, Fantastic Vent Fans, which is your overhead fans in your kitchen, living room, and bedroom, bathroom. HVAC is your heating and cooling. Um, Bluetooth is so that you can pair your phone to this panel. And if you pair your phone to the panel, you'll be able to use your phone to control the same things the panel does. And then the last selection is for your lighting. But we'll start here on the left. To view your tanks, just press that, and you can see how much uh, fresh water you have, how much gray and or black. So you'll know when to empty your tanks if you need to or fill your fresh. You can also see here what your house battery voltage is. 
and your chassis battery voltage. If you need to turn on any of the icons, lights, water pump, you have to press it and then it goes from a gray to a red. So you can see there, once I press that, these don't change colors, but the ones that operate, let's say the water pump and some of the other functions, they will turn red. There's a top off function and an autofill function there um, for your fresh water if you like. But again, if you want them off, uh, you can just press them again and they go gray. Once they're gray, they're turned off. So these are your tanks, lights, and water pump controls on that screen. The AGS screen is a screen that you can set up, turn it on, and then go into your setup to go ahead and set the times that you want your generator to run or quiet times to be off. You can refer to your manual uh, for more information on that. Um, there's duration. Uh, obviously, we enabled the generator uh, and it started. You can see uh, it started because our voltage was a little bit low. To turn that off, we just press it again and it will go off. Floor heat is pretty simple. You just press the floor heat. You'll see you can select front, middle, or back of the coach and you can set those to high, medium, or low. If you press it again, then that floor heat is off. For our fantastic vents, um, you can select the kitchen, the half bath, or the rear bath here. Um, there is a rain override, so if I press the button and it didn't come on, I could press the rain override and then it would manually come on and stay on. Typically, if there's rain outside, you don't want your vent to be running. Um, especially in a heavy downpour, so you wouldn't want to override it if it was really raining hard outside. Our HVAC selection is for all of our heating and cooling selections. So if I don't have that on, I won't have heating or cooling. So I have to make sure that's turned on to have heat or cool. In this case, we have the Oasis burner turned on, and that allows us to have heat in the coach. If I don't have my burner on, I could select my AC1, meaning alternating current element, or two elements. That won't give me near as much heat as the burner will. So if you want to have constant heat or you want to take a long shower, you want to make sure to have your Oasis burner turned on. This just gives you a small amount of heat, uh, whether that's hot water or forced air. There is a stool room heater in the half bath, and if you want that to come on, you'll have to select the stool room heater. You can go into the setup on these, and you can go into uh, heating and air conditioning settings but you uh, can refer to your uh, owner's manual for more details on that. Hold and e eco, um, those will hold the temp or slightly change it if you're just leaving the coach. Um, you could select either one of those to help save on energy. Again, refer to your owner's manual on energy savings for those. Once you select a mode, whether it's a fan, off, cool, auto, heat pump, or furnace, that's going to make your selections for heating and cooling. When that heat turns on or the burner turns on, you're going to see uh, the burner icon uh, display there. There is a selection called auto. That auto selection will automatically choose between heat pump, air conditioning, or furnace for you. If you choose auto, all you need to do is set the temperature you want, and it automatically chooses whether it's heating in heat pump, or furnace, or cooling. And it will 
change to any one of those three as long as you're plugged in and that Oasis burner is turned on, it will automatically set and turn on and off for your temperatures. In our case, we currently have the furnace turned on and our Oasis burner is heating the coach. Our next selection over is the <clears throat> Bluetooth. If we want to pair our phone to the Bluetooth, all the instructions are here. And then to pair your phone, we just press pairing and then your phone will be paired and you'll be able to see the same screens that you saw as we went through the icons. This flashes blue when it's in the pairing process. Our lighting control is at the end. Um, we can control all of our lighting here in uh, all of the rooms, um, even the outdoor lighting is displayed here for the outdoor. So whether I select any one of these, I can go in after I make that selection and then I can turn all on or off or just in that room separately. And that concludes the panel control. So moving into the bedroom, we have our privacy door. The slider door is unlocked here, and then we can move it over. As we slide it over, the other panel moves with it, and then it locks into place here. So now it's locked. To store it, store it back in place, just push down to unlock, and move it back over. And this is the position that you want to have the door for travel. Just behind the door, we have our room temperature sensor for our HVAC controls. Our speaker, uh, speaker controls here control these speakers on the ceiling. There's two of them and there's two switches. So if we want one speaker on, we press one. If we want both, we press both. These are actually only working when the radio is in house mode. Nope. No, that's on the outside. These can be turned on independently or both at the same time if the radio is turned on. Then you'll have the radio channel that you're playing in the front here in the bedroom. It doesn't control volume, but it controls on and off. The volume is still controlled at the front. The nightstand here has storage below, 120 volt outlet here with two USB charge ports. We have a small window here. The window can be slid uh, open and closed here and locked. The shade is manual, up and down. There's additional storage here. Um, with a port that you can drop uh, a hose through. If you had a CPAP machine, you could st store that up here. And a 120 volt outlet is here to plug it in. There's additional storage going across. We'll go over there. To access the extra storage space under your bed, just grab a hold and lift. And you can see here, uh, we've got your extra chairs for the dining room and for the table leaves to extend your table in the dining room. To, you, can, you can store additional uh, things. If you move these over, you'd have a lot more space on one side or the other. To close it, just push down. Above the bed, we have our drop ceiling louver panel. It's actually uh, retractable on this side. Uh, magnets are holding it up. So if we grab a hold of that and pull down, we can see the discharge vents here on the driver's side where the air comes out, cool air or heat pump for warm air. And these vents have filters uh, all the way across. So what we need to do is keep these filters clean and we need to remove them, just pull down. And then we have a filter here that we can remove 
and dust that off, wash it with warm soapy water, and let it air dry after we rinse it. Put it back on, and we need to do this at each of the panels in the coach. So here in the bedroom, in the kitchen, and the living room. So to insert it back, line up the slot with the tabs and push up. When you're finished, just push this back up and the magnets will catch and keep it in place. Here in the ceiling is not a smoke detector, it's your CO2 detector. The smoke detector is in the front of the coach. It tests and sounds pretty much the same. To test it, you can just press in the center here and hold. You can hear the tone and you'll see, you'll see a little LED light that flashes. That means the battery's working and it would, it would sound if there was a CO2 in your coach. If you don't hear the sound or see the LED light, you should check the battery. To do that, just grab a hold and squeeze and pull down. And you see your batteries here that you can replace that battery. Put this back up and do that same test again to make sure that your new battery is working. On the wardrobe side of your slide, we have your wardrobe controller for moving the slide out in and out. It's labeled in and out, in is retract, out is extend. You have to hold the button down to move the slide out, in or out, and you have to keep it depressed or if you release it'll stop. But once it's fully extended or retracted, it will stop by itself and then you can release it. So. Right now it's all the way out. If I, it is, this is, a, this is the bed slide. If I stop and go in the out position, I can hold the button down and you can hear it stop. We have our closet space here. Inside the closet is a special list of all your appliances in your coach. Every model number and serial number associated with the model is listed there. So if you need to replace any of your appliances, you can see what the model number is to replace it with the right one. Or uh, if you need warranty parts, you'll have the right model number to look it up. The glass door just under the wardrobe here is the audio-visual cabinet and uh, connections for the TV here. You'll have a satellite and DVD connection here, and they're labeled. This is the uh, Blu-ray DVD. The satellite connection is straight back on the left-hand side, and you can plug into the 120-volt recepts here at the top shelf area and put your receivers here or in the bottom shelf. More drawer space here. And more closet space here. That's your plug for the television. This window is an egress window, an emergency exit. Um, it, it does have a screen, so once you release the handle to open the window, you'll still need to pull this handle towards you to get the screen out of your way so you can exit. You can use it just as a fresh air window, just by pushing this out, and the lever will just latch right there in place and you can get nice fresh air here. To close it, just lift up and pull in, turn and latch. As you enter the restroom here in the back of the coach, the, the full bath, there's a pocket door here. You can unlock it just by pressing down. 
and then you can close the pocket door and it locks when it's in the closed position. To unlock, just push down and open. And that's, that's where you want to have it in the stowed position for travel. As we move into the bathroom, on the back side of the toilet, there's a door. That's an emergency exit door. Uh, in the exit door is a window, crank out open or close with the screen for air. If we ever need to exit, we'll need to step over the toilet after we unlock the doors. There's a deadbolt and a door handle lock. So we'd have to unlock this one and this one and then open the door and we'll demonstrate how that panel is removed. There's a little tab here. Just grab a hold of that panel, lift that out of the way, and you'll see there's a ladder there. That ladder just folds out and telescopes down, so we can just loosen the Velcro, and the ladder will drop out. and I'll go outside to show you how to store it. So just lift and the ladder telescope's back in place. Lift it up here. Pull the Velcro back over and put our panel back in. You want the tab up and towards the inside so that you, when you can reach it from the inside. And then close the door. Then after we close the door, we just lock the handle and the deadbolt. The Dometic toilet has an automatic flush module control. To fill the water in the bowl is the top blue button. Just press and hold that and the water will uh, increase in the bowl. To flush is the lower button, the blue one. To flush, just press and that will flush. The only time it wouldn't flush is when the black tank is full. That is the LED light here. If that's red, the toilet will not flush. You'll have to empty your black tank first. There's a warning light that comes on before the red. Here, it's amber. So if your amber light is on, you're about 75% full on your black tank, and the next light is red and you won't be able to flush. Just above that, we've got the same touch panel control that we have in the living room and the hall. To go to the home screen, you can access all of the functions and features there. HVAC controls all your heating and cooling. If you would go to the HVAC and you want your heating to be on, you'll still have to activate your Oasis ITR burner. The elements are for small amounts of hot water, but the burner has to be on if you want heat or long hot showers. Just above... Turn your burner back off when it's ready to go. Just above that, uh, we talked about the fantastic vent. Do we need to do that again? It works the same way. Just say it works the same The way. fantastic vent here in the rear bath works the same as the half bath and the kitchen. Moving over to the shower, we have a sliding glass door. To open it, just push to the right to open and lock. You'd want to make sure it's in the lock position when you travel. I'll step into the shower to show you how the system works. It's fairly simple. If you'd like to save on your hot water, uh, the directions are here on the back, but I'll just explain it. It's pretty simple. This blue indicator is a kind of a dark blue, and this valve helps you save your fresh water. 
So when you first turn your shower on, you want to have this in recirculate so that the or on, you'd want to put this in recirculate. When you put this in recirculate, the water doesn't come out of the shower. It actually goes back into the fresh tank and recirculates until this color changes to like a more milky blue white color. After that changes to the lighter color from the dark blue, then we would move this over to the left hand side and then we could adjust our water temperature left or right for hot and cold and we could press this to either have the water come out of here or the handle. Just refer to the back of your brochure for more information. Cabinet in the sink, we've got two glass doors and storage behind. We have two recepts, 120 volt on both sides. Sink on and off, hot and cold. We have drawer space here and here, cabinet here. Uh, the louvers are for your heat. The small louvers here under the shower are just ventilation only. You have your sentry safe here. I think we have our safe in behind these doors. Our lighting controls and the kit that comes with your coach with all the warranty papers. The warranty papers need to be filled out and mailed in, or you can go online and register your appliances there. But this paperwork includes all of your plumbing, heating, air conditioning, exterior, electrical, and all of your appliances. So take some time and go through those manuals. This cabinet has uh, a hanger for your clothes, so it's actually a wardrobe. There's a door here for access to your washer and dryer. Controls for your hot and cold water. And there's a cover on the bottom. There's a cover here with more storage below. On the back wall is your lighting control panel. In your 25 Superstar, to access the engine, you'll have to open the cover and release these on both sides. Then you come around to the front, grab a hold of the handle here, and pull. Now you'll be able to check your fluid levels in your engine coolant. This is your air filter, your wiper wash solution. This is your air dry air dryer filter. This is the access to your headlamp bulbs turn signals and marker lights at the front. Over here you have your power steering, fuse and relay panel oil dipstick to check your oil levels in your engine and the same access to your headlamp bulbs. This is your fuel filter and you can look in here cover grab here lift and latch. So there's an access panel here just behind your steps. Uh, the key for that is labeled 2002. We insert that, we can unlock this compartment and that is our fuel tank, our fuel cap which we need to remove to fill diesel fuel in here. This filter is for your ITR Oasis and the smaller uh, plastic 
bottle there is for the overflow for the ITR Oasis, which holds Century antifreeze or Century boiler antifreeze fluid that can be purchased from Numar as well as the filter for the ITR Oasis. When you're done filling your tank or servicing those items, just make sure to have this up and then close and then rotate to lock. The access panel here is your right camera. So this camera shows everything in your right turn lane. Um, it, whenever you turn your right turn signal on, that's gonna show this lane. In the first compartment back, you've got storage here. The interior light comes on and off automatically. So when we close the door, the light will go out. In this small uh, compartment here um, that's protected is a water spigot for hot water. That can be turned on and off right here. In the, in the next compartment is more storage. We should do the Trimark handle, unless you want to do it off of the other coach. In our next compartment back, we have our Dometic freezer. The Dometic freezer has a tray that we can pull out. The connections for this freezer are 12 volt and 120. Those are right here. And to operate the freezer, just plug them in. The 120 volt and the 12 volt just plug in here. And then it will switch back and forth from 12 volt to 120. You can operate this via Bluetooth on your phone. Just refer to your Dometic operator's manual on those Bluetooth connections or scan the QR code and go to their website. On the back wall are additional controls. This is the control for your KIB panels inside. It's called the TMSC100. Uh, these are some additional KIB uh, modules here. This is your uh, security light. So up above the window here is your security light, your 360 degree camera for the side, for the side view camera, and your patio light, marker light here. This door folds up. Inside this compartment is your outside entertainment center. Your outside entertainment center has a Bose speaker here. The Bose speaker can be turned on and off to go through the TV or the dash radio. The dash radio is to the right. The TV is to the left and off is in the center. If you're operating the radio through the speaker, you'll need to turn your radio inside to house mode. This is your fresh tank drain. You'll need to drain your tank from all water before you winterize. That's why it's here. Above, you got another 120 volt plug with USB outlet. The TV can be moved and located to the position you like. When you're ready to store it back in place, just push back and it locks in place. In our entertainment center, we have our docking light. In our wheel well, at the back of the wheel well, we have our HWH jack. The HWH jack is extended right now for leveling but once you retract it, you want to make sure visually that the jack is fully retracted. In our next compartment door, you've got your inner vac, inner vac accessories, your additional tile, your air hose, and your hitch accessories. 
along with your rear lighting and access to your release. So if we pull on this, that compartment releases. There's also a light in the back here for docking in the coach. If I pull this lever, you want to be standing away from this because it has a strong spring to open. And then inside is additional storage. There's a manual light on top here. You turn that on. The accessories that we saw in the other compartment are here. These would connect here. And this one is for this location. On this side, you've got your seven pin plug for towing, and this is your nine pin, and this is for your Voyager camera. For optional trailer cameras. And that is for optional trailer cameras. So on the driver's side compartment, this small access panel still accesses your fuel for your diesel fill. But in addition to that, it accesses your DEF tank. So you would fill your DEF here. And the auxiliary airlines are also here in this location. So this is the auxiliary air outlet. And this one is the auxiliary air brake release. Just above the access door, you have your left camera. The left camera always comes on when you turn your signal on to turn left so it's to view this lane. The first door back is your magnum inverter, your cord reel, your surge guard protector, which is your transfer switch. The surge guard protector power that's coming in here is showed by these two red LEDs. That means it's powered up, but it also displays the power in this power panel monitor readout. So you can view both line one and line two, or if there's a fault, that fault will show here. You can scroll up and down to view the faults and what the amperage is on both lines. The gray is for power coming in from the generator, and the black cord going in the bottom is power coming in from the shore cord. So this transfer switch decides to either accept power from the generator or from the shore cord. It also protects your coach from low voltages or high voltage spikes. This door is for your part cable. Just plug your part cable in here. Make sure your over the air TV antenna is turned off or you won't receive the cable channels that are coming through. The cord reel has a electric retract. So when we want to store the cord, we just press this and it will retract the cord. You manually pull it out to plug it in and then to stow it put it right there so we can close the door. Behind the cord reel compartment, we've got our fuses, our fuse panel. We've got our um, battery, we get our battery disconnect here. We have our charge bridge solenoid called a BIM. We have our 12 volt fuses here all of these fuses are labeled on the back side of the panel that we just removed. So if, for instance, our 
step wasn't working uh, or the override relay or any of the other items listed here, house fuse panel, slide out water line heater, those fuses are labeled and we would go to that number of fuse and pull the fuse if that appliance wasn't working and see if it's blown. If it's blown, we would go to our spare fuses and get the same size to replace it. The fuses that you can reset are, they look like this, they're longer, they stick out further and they have a small center uh, tab that you would press to reset those fuses. The ones that are labeled B are like a fuse, but they automatically reset. They're called mini breakers. When you're done accessing this panel area, we take our ABS cover, line up the Velcro, and put our panel back in place. Our Magnum inverter is here. The Magnum inverter is controlled from the inside panel in the overhead. The LED light indicator here uh, and each one of these plugs are labeled here. The red is the positive and the black is negative. There's a small resettable mini breaker here and here at the bottom of this uh, inverter. If these trip, they come out a little bit, just push them back in to reset. In our next compartment in the baggage area, we have our ITR Oasis Chinook furnace for the water heater and for the heat in the coach. It's a diesel burner. It will only burn if you have at least a quarter tank of fuel in your diesel tank. So if you have less than a quarter, this will not fire. That's just to protect you against uh, having uh, the Oasis take up all of your fuel in the coach. There is a small manual panel that we give you along with the touch panel controls. If the touch panel controls didn't operate your heat uh, or your uh, water heat, then you could plug this one in and operate it manually. The power indicator light always on. This has to be turned on and the power has to be on for the touch panels to work inside. If this is turned off, you won't have a green light there and you won't be able to turn it on from the inside. It has to be turned on manually here and then you'll be able to operate it from the inside or your manual touch panel. If you're connected to a 120 volt power source, 50 amp shore cord, you'll always see the AC heat available. So you can uh, operate this with the AC elements. The other lights here, if the compressor is running or the fuel pump, those turn green. If the ones on the bottom come on, they'll be red and that means you have a fault. If you see a red light here, on the bottom ones or in the one at the top, which is somewhat blocked here. If any of these are not green, they'll change red. And that means that you need to open this up and change a fuse. If that doesn't take care of the red light, then you'll need to have it serviced. When the flame is burning, you'll see a nice bright orange flame. If you look back towards the left and up, if you have a fault that comes here, but you want to try to reset, you can press the reset button. If it goes through the reset and works, great. If it doesn't, you'll have to go to the servicing dealer. In this compartment, you have your HWH pump, reservoir tank, manifold, and solenoids. The entire slide tray can be pulled out towards you uh, for service. Once it's pulled out, you can check the reservoir level. In behind, there is a dipstick. You can refer to your owner's manual, but to check the, the uh, dipstick level, you'll need to have your slide rooms out and your jacks up.
in our next compartment back, we have our house batteries. The house batteries are on a tray. The house batteries should be serviced and checked for fluid because these type of batteries are lead acid. Lead acid batteries are filled with fluid. The fluid can be checked and distilled water can be added if needed to keep the fluid level above the plates. To check the fluid level, you would remove these, check the level, and then replace and tighten. You need to do that on all these batteries. You also need to keep the connections clean. If you remove a battery and replace it, the wiring schematics on the back of the wall, so you can uh, look at that to make sure you've connected your wiring back in uh, the right position. When you're done servicing and checking your fluid levels, just push it back and put your locking pins in. In your next compartment back, you've got your Onan generator. The Onan generator can be started either inside the coach on the touch panel, or you can start it manually outside. You can start the generator here. If you press down and hold that button, the generator starts. To turn it off, just press the stop button. We won't start it because we're inside a building right now. Once you start the generator, to make sure that you get power on the inside, you check your breaker. If the breaker is off, Reset it towards the on. There's a Hobbs meter here, which tells you how many hours you have on your generator. The fuel and level for the coolant and the oil are right here. Oil is here, coolant is here. Make sure those are up to the upper level. In our next compartment back, we've got our water bay compartment. This compartment is heated and it has a small thermostat that controls the temperature inside. That thermostat is right over here beside the uh, hose reel. That keeps the temperature inside about 40 degrees if you have your ITR Oasis burner turned on. If you don't have your burner turned on, that convector in this compartment won't give you any heat and your, your lines may freeze. So make sure your ITR Oasis is turned on burner, not just heating elements. To use this compartment and to fill the tanks with water and have water in the coach, you'll first need to pull out your hose for fresh water connection and connect it to a water source and make sure that the water pressure coming in is does not exceed 60 PSI. If it does, you'll have to put a regulator on in line. You'll notice this hose has winterizing solution in it. To winterize, the directions are right here above the shower. And you just follow each of these steps, which include draining the low point drains and on taking the cap off of here, opening these two lines, placing this into potable antifreeze, and turning on the water pump, which will draw the antifreeze solution in the coach. When that happens, you'll be pumping fluid in all of the water lines and appliances in the coach. Once that's completed, you can remove this out of the potable antifreeze and recap it. and put these back in their original positions. So after the coach is winterized, um, or any time you might need to use the handheld shower, this is the hot and cold for it. You can turn your water supply on here to rinse things off. When you're ready to use your water again in the springtime, you'll need to insert your filter here just unscrew or remove this is your whole house water filtration. Drop your filter in, 
and tighten this with your filter wrench that comes with your coach. Now your, all your water is being filtered that goes into your fresh tank or into your city water supply in your coach. To fill your water tank, the fresh water tank fill is right here. So you want to have this handle up and your water supply turned on. This, as soon as the water supply pressure is on and this is in this position, the fresh water tank will begin to fill. And once it's full, it will start to overflow out of the overflow tube that goes on the ground underneath the tank. That's nothing dangerous. And after it's full, you'd want to turn it to autofill. In the autofill position, if it's enabled inside on the monitor panel inside the coach, then the tank will automatically fill as you use out of it. When it comes time that the tanks need to be emptied, there's a sewage holding tank and a gray holding tank. And these are the controls that open and close those tanks. Once you connect to the drain hose for the gray tank and black tank, then you would be able to come back here and open the gray tank and the black tank, usually the black tank first. Once the black tank is empty, then you would open the gray tank, which rinses all the black tank out. Once both tanks are empty, then you could remove your hose and you would open your sewage rinse, attach your hose here, rinse out your black tank, and then close this. To store this, the hose that you use to empty out your sewer tanks, this is the storage compartment for the hose. Okay, and then back underneath there, you got the lift pump. <clears throat> yeah. Um, The small tank that you see uh, in the back of this compartment is called a lift tank. That lift tank takes the water that comes out of the gray water area in the kitchen and it pumps it into the gray tank when you're plugged in to shore power or your generator is running or your inverter is on. Again, to turn the water pump on and off, that's right here. When you turn it on, you'll see the LED light illuminate that it is on. To store the, the water line supply hose, there has, it has an electric retract feature. Just reach back and press the black rocker switch beside the hose and it will power retract. This is your docking light. Going back to our rear two compartments. We have more storage area. We have a 30 amp receptacle here. If you have a cord that has a 30 amp plug, you can plug into here and run that back to your trailer or whatever area you would like to power up. That's our left turn signal. That's our right turn signal. These are our emergency flashers. These are our marker lights and headlights. And these are our brake lights no, and your rear docking light. This is the one, two, nine pin and seven pin. Okay. At your rear hitch, you have your connection for your nine pin connection or seven pin trailer connection for your lighting. So for your Girard patio awnings at the top of your coach, 
there's two patio awnings and there's two channels. So if I go to channels, uh, number one is the front awning. If I wanna stop that one, I can. If I go to channel two and press out, that's my rear awning. I can hit stop. If I want to run them both out at the same time, my channel would be zero, which is selecting both. Then I press out and both of them come out at the same time. Both of the awnings have LEDs on the bottom. I can turn my LED lights on here or off. They'll come out and stop automatically. They'll both stop in the same position. They have a feature where if the wind picks up and it's uh, blustering and it's possible that the awnings might be damaged in the higher wind, they'll automatically close. They have a wind sensing device. The wind sensor is mounted towards the center of the awnings on both of them. I'll move the, uh, I'll move the awning and show you how that works. So, yeah. The wind sensor that I'm talking about is really a shake sensor. It doesn't measure the wind, but it measures the amount of movement that the wind is making. So once the awning moves like this, In the event that the either awning uh, will not retract, you can get up on the roof and in the center position of both awnings, just an inch or so away from the end at the very top, you can insert this rod that comes with your coach. It's an Allen head shape and you can turn it with a wrench and that awning will retract or extend which, whichever direction you choose. So in emergency where you lose power or the motor fails, you can still close your awning.